It is zeal that will drive you to do those things. Don't leave out without putting a dime in that offering. Don't leave out yourself. The zeal of the Lord will produce something in you that will bring a return in the name of Jesus. So let us be consumed by the zeal for the house of the Lord. Let us be consumed. Let's, be, let's pursue earnestly. Let's diligently pursue the house of God. What the spirit of the Lord is doing in the house of God. And that is what our zeal is. Our zeal is to do like Jesus did. The Bible said that he went about doing good. He went about doing good. Why was he doing good? Because the zeal of the house of the Lord consumed him. The zeal, the zeal of the house of the Lord consumed him. And it's because of zeal that some people gave 2,000, some gave 1,000, some gave more than they can even afford, some gave painfully. Because of the zeal for the house of the Lord, we all want to see the work of God done and prosper in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our God is a zealous God. God is the God of passion. Yes. God is the diligent God. God is the God of order. God doesn't want things done anyhow. Praise the Lord. Amen. So God expects the same from us. Our God is a faithful God. He expects the same out of us. Out of us. He's a zealous God. He's a God of zeal. He wants to see things done and done well. He's the holy God. He's the perfect God. And he wants to see us do the same. We came from him. We have his gene. We have his spirit in us. And that is what should be driving us to do as the Lord did. Hallelujah. He expects the same from us. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He doesn't want to see lukewarmness. And of course, the opposite of zeal is what? Lukewarmness. He said, I would rather have you cold or hot so I can know where to place you. But you are left and right. I don't know where to place you. God forbid it's not going to be our portion in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Our zeal for the Lord should be on a high rank in the name of Jesus. Our passion for the Lord because God is a God that weighs all action. Amen. Even if you fake it, God is a God that weighs all action. We can deceive man, but we cannot deceive God. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are gathered here this morning because of the zeal we have for the house of the living King Jesus. Praise be the name of the Lord. So, we're running out of time. I'm not going to go too much. But let me go into simple things. I'll just go briefly into what I have here. I look at uh, myself and say, what is the zeal? What, what effect does zeal have in our lives? Examine yourself. Sometimes I do that and I overdo it. Examine yourself. What effect does zeal have in your life as a believer? As a believer in the house of God, what effect does zeal for the house of God have in our lives. And when, the, when I read that uh, John chapter 13, man of God used this on Wednesday, John, uh, uh, John chapter 2, 13 verse 17, let's go there. John chapter 2, 13 verse 17, zeal is not something that is hidden. When you're zealous for the house of God, everyone sees it. Everyone knows it, that you're zealous for the house of the Lord. And he said, and the Jews, Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to, the to Jerusalem, and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money um, sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out. You know, sometimes zeal will make you, you know, this is not the time to start talking. Because you know they will not listen when I start talking to them. You know these people are so, like the Bible called them, sick neck. When he starts talking to them, why are you all doing this? They start, our father, this is Moses said that, Moses did this. There's no talking in this zeal provoking. He put him for himself very good whooping. Call it whooping. He put it all together. Because if I start talking about this to these people, they will not listen to me. He made it so painful for them that they had to run out. Everybody responds to pain. He made himself small cords. Call it whoop. He made himself a very good whoop. That way they will listen to him without talking back. He drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the temple. Sometimes you have to act crazy like that so people can know that you're serious. Uh -huh. If he starts talking to them, hey, this is our, this is the, nobody will listen. Until he acted like that, nobody, everybody listened. And said unto them that sold out, take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. This is our father's house. We all need to defend the house. We all need to defend the house. And said unto them, and his disciples remembered 
that it was written concerning him that the seal of thy house had eaten him up. How many of us can say to ourselves that the seal of the house of the Lord has eaten us up? The zeal for the house of God has eaten him up. Now he that zeal now is what is driving him. May the zeal for the house of God drive us. Amen. May the zeal for the house of God drive us to where God wants us to be. In the name of Jesus. Zeal, number one, is visible. When the disciples saw him, they, oh yeah, I remember that. And may they say the same of us. What we are doing in the house of God. People will see it and say, God bless him because the zeal of the house of God consumes him. That is why he's doing what he's doing. Man of God, I gave 2,000. Man, that my brother has given so many things in this house. Many of you guys have given things. It is because of that zeal that is in you, that is pushing you and driving you to do so. So the zeal for the house of the Lord drove him to do what he did. Let's look at Exodus, uh, Exodus chapter 32. Exodus 32. Even for Mary Magdalene, it was the zeal for God that drove him to the tomb when everybody went back. The zeal for Jesus drove him back to the tomb. Everybody went home. He stayed back. Even when he got home, he left. Early morning before everybody got there, that zeal pushed him. Exodus 32. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come out of the house, of the mountain, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, these are the people that are living by sight and not by faith. Because they haven't seen Moses, they, they, they do their own thing. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up, up out of the land of Egypt, will not know what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden Move on to 15. Let's rush it. Move on to 15. 15 verse. Let's move on to 15. And Moses turned. When Moses came back, he turned and went down from the mountain. And the two tables of the testimony were in his hand, which are the, the Ten Commandments. The tables were written on both their sides. On the one side and on the other were they written. Go on. And the tables were the work of God. And the writing was the writing of God graven upon the tables. Go on. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they were shouting, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war. Go on. And he said, It is not the noise of... There's something I'm looking for. Keep going down. Go to 19. And it came to pass, as soon as he came unto the time camp, and he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger, what? That was a holy anger right there. And Moses' anger burned, and he cast the tablets on his hand and break them beneath the mount. Keep going. And he took the calf. This is what I'm looking for. He took the calf, which had made, he made, which God made and gave him, and burnt it in the fire, and grounded it to powder, and strode it upon the water, and made the people of Israel drink it. He made the people of Israel drink, drink it. When zeal pursues you, a holy anger burns within you. And that's the same thing that happened to Jesus. Because wherever you are, sometimes I see um, uh, people discuss this thing called family guy or something or on television. When, when they discuss, when they talk about Jesus, when they talk about this thing, I, I'm wondering, these people watching these things, do you guys go to church? They can't be talking about your Lord like this and you're smiling and you're laughing with them. It means that you're one with them. You're one with them. But Moses' zeal drove him to do what he didn't want to do. He granted those jewelries and everything and made them drink it. He was driven to do, to do that. So the zeal of the Lord can provoke a man to a holy anger, not an ungodly anger. An ungodly anger produces unrighteousness. Oh, yeah. But the holy anger, even Saul, so the, the, the one of God said that Saul, I think that was first Samuel, when the spirit of God entered Saul, an anger burned within him. Anger born within him. It is a holy anger. Zeal of the Lord who may provoke you to anger when someone is doing or saying something bad about your Lord, about your God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So godly zeal can provoke a holy anger. Now let's look at another thing. Godly zeal is not self-seeking. Zeal is not self-seeking. No man that seeks God will go before God and is asking when you... When you seek the face of God, believe it or not, you're never the same. Godly zeal will drive you to a place. It is the same thing that uh, happened to 12-year-old uh, Jesus. 
It was the zeal of God in him that made him stay back. When his parents left, he stayed back. Godly zeal will drive us to a place of worship. A place where we begin to seek God for ourselves. A place where we look unto God and say, you are the only one that I know and the only one that I want. Hallelujah. Amen. A godly zeal is not self-seeking. You know, Matthew, uh, Matthew 6, 33 says something, and I'm sure we all know it. It says, seek you first the kingdom of God, and every other thing will be added unto you. There is no way you'll be able to do that without a godly zeal in you. There is no way a man will seek God without that burning zeal, because something will always happen that say, oh, let me go for that one first. But when your heart is you know, attached to the things of God, you will ignore those things and present yourself here. As we all gather here, we have some other things that we could have been doing. House to clean, grocery to do, other things to do. But because of godly zeal, we are all here. We present ourselves before the Lord our God. So godly zeal is not self-seeking. It's not self-seeking. You're not seeking your own interest. Is seeking the glory of Jesus. Godly zeal drives you to the place where you begin to give glory to Jesus. It drives you where you're selfless. Where you're self, it, it's not about, you now understand that this is not about me. It's not about me, it's about Jesus. It's about giving glory to the Lord. And everything that comes out of it, you will not take the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. May God drive us to a place where we will seek his face Amen. and not give up in the name of Jesus. Amen. And another thing is that godly zeal must be backed up with knowledge. We've heard of knowledge and uh, uh, zeal without knowledge. There are things called zeal without knowledge. People do things without, you know, much knowledge attached to it. Let's look at Acts chapter 3. I'm sorry, Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Back up your zeal with knowledge. Back up your zeal with knowledge. Acts 17. Chapter 3. You see the people in that thing is in the Thessalonian opening and alleging that Christ must need um, must need have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. That's not what I'm looking for. It, it, it's still down down. But what I'm looking for there is, is in uh, Paul went to Thessalonians and saw the sign where people put, put up and said to an unknown God, they're serving God, they have the zeal for God. But they are doing it without knowledge. They have no idea who they are serving. They have no idea who their God is. But when the Jews... No, never mind. 16, right? Okay. But try it. Go down. 17, 23. 23, man of God. For as I passed by and I beheld your devotions... I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Their heart is seeking after someone. Their heart, they want to connect their spirit to someone, but they have no idea what they're seeking. Even Jesus said to the woman at the well, he said, you people here have no idea what you're worshipping, but we, the Jews, we know who we are worshipping. We need to know who God is. We need to increase our knowledge in God. We need to work, and the only way, <clears throat> the only way, excuse me, the only way we can do that is to increase our knowledge by the study of the word. We need to increase our desire, our zeal, our knowledge in study of the word. Even Paul himself at some point acted in ignorance and there you can see zeal without knowledge. Paul traveled places on his way to Damascus was when he met Jesus. He was going there to get the believers to punish them, to jail them, to, to, to destroy them. But that was zeal that he had. It was a zeal for the house of God, but end without knowledge. It was a zeal without knowledge. These days, many of us are doing things. We have zeal, but it's not backed up with knowledge. We have no understanding sometimes that what we're doing is not according to the will and the word of God. And may God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Even Uzziah. Uzziah is the one that made me, you know, feel like, what, what are we doing here? Uzziah, the ark of God was about to fall. And Uzziah grabbed it and he killed him. That was zeal without knowledge. You know that this thing, no man can touch it. And you guys, everybody was told. You were informed. You were commanded. Come not near. But that zeal pushed him. And he touched that thing. May God enable us. We cannot act against the will of God in our lives in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Even the ark of the, 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 the tablet that Moses broke, those are all zeal without knowledge. Anger drove him to that. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, one thing I also want to say is zeal is sacrificial. 
if you can't sacrifice your time, you cannot sacrifice your money, you cannot sacrifice your, 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 your contribution and anything that do, your best. Our zeal for God makes us sacrifice anything available. Nothing we own is ours. We should be able to sacrifice our time, sacrifice our best, and that is the difference between Cain and Abel. That's the difference between Cain and Abel. Abel offered the right thing to God, offered a good offering to God because of his zeal, his, his, zeal, his desire, his love, his compassion for God. But Abel, uh, Cain did his own, you know, he gathered the good ones for himself and he left the other ones that is messed up and left it unto God. And his gift was not accepted. Praise the name of the Lord. May God grant us the grace to give everything we have unto him. Amen. Everything we have is from God and we give them back to him in the name of Jesus. Amen. So zeal is sacrificial. Everything we do here in this church, even like this money, where there's everything we do here in the church, our zeal push us to the point where we give of ourselves. It's sacrificial. It may be painful. That's what sacrifice is. Every sacrifice is painful. You know, otherwise we won't call it sacrifice. Unless it's painful, it's not sacrifice. Every sacrifice is painful. So zeal will drive you to a place where you give painfully. Where you give out of pain. And anything you give out of pain brings reward. Amen. It may not be, it's not sweet at that moment. Everything we give out of pain. Amen. The reward may not be there and there, but the reward there is speaking for you somewhere. Amen. It's speaking behind the scene for you. Amen. It's calling on the Lord, the name of the Lord for you. Your zeal, your zeal speaks on your behalf behind the scenes somewhere. It's touching the heart of someone to bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And another thing here is zeal has a way of connecting us to our destiny. Zeal has a way of connecting you to your destiny, especially in the area of service. Zeal has a way of pushing you to service. And from that service, you find out that you're gradually stepping into your destiny, what God has called you to do. Many people say, I don't know what my destiny is. I don't know what God has called me to do. Start somewhere. Let zeal be your hand. Let zeal hold your hand and take you there. Let zeal take you there. Whatever your hand find it to do, do it with all your might. And that is what zeal is. Whatever your hand find it to do, do it with all your might. And that is what zeal is. Unless you do it diligently, it's not called zeal. Unless you you do it all your might, you're always there. You are not doing it today. To, it's not something you can do halfway. Zeal is not halfway. It's not eye service. Zeal is what you have to do with all your might, with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul. Amen. And that is what God looks. That is why God doesn't look at us physically. What you see here, physical, physical here is deceiving. What you see here is not what God is looking at. God is looking on the inside. How you did it. No, not even the amount you gave. How you gave it. Is it given grudgingly? Were you persuaded to do it? Were you persuaded to give? Were you forced to give? Were you forced to come here and clean the house? Were you forced to join the choir? Were you forced to sing? Were you forced, especially the children's church. Let me put that one. Were you forced to go there to the children's church? You know, that, that one has to be zeal. Because that's a big sacrifice right there. And everybody's running from it. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry, I had to throw that in. May God help us. You know, zeal connects us to a place of destiny. You don't know where you you don't know who your helper of destiny is. I was sharing with my husband. Uh, 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 was it last week? One of my students that came to class. I was asking him. Uh, her, I said, I didn't know you have a personal care home. Oh, she said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. How? This was what he did. What she did for a patient in the past. A patient that she took care of. You know, this patient loved her work so much that she added her to her will. And at the end, when this patient died, she willed $40,000 to her because of the way she took care of this lady. And medical law, ethics, those of you in, uh, 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 in medical field, you know it. She's not supposed to take it. So she refused it. And everyone, are you crazy? $40,000 willed to you. Who will know? Agency took you there. You don't have to tell agency. But she refused it. And the lady said, the woman's daughter called her and said, my mother told me to do this for you. She's dead. You know, a will has to be carried out when somebody is dead. So she, this lady was so diligent and said, I cannot touch this money. I have to use it to do something. What do you want me to do for you? Blank check. And the woman said, this is personal care home. I'm here doing this personal care home. I would, do, I would love to have my own. 
and this white woman pushed her aside, bought a house, four bedrooms, got clients for herself, did all the paperwork, went to the state, certified it, got the license, placed the clients, placed the staff, everything, and handed her the key. Hallelujah! That is what still and diligent we do for you. Amen. And I'm like, what in the world are you doing here then? She said, I'm not in sin, I'm just, a, you know, the lady that was telling me, she just did that as a caregiver, not even with a license. She did it as a caregiver, but she put all her heart inside it and did it with all her might. And look at what it produced. When she was doing that, did she know? No, she didn't know. But that Z was speaking for her, was crying for her. The Z was crying for her. Today, she's about to open her third one. Because that door is already, any door that God opened, no man can shut up. God has already opened that door for her, and it's not that easy to close again. It's not that easy to close because that thing has a seed that is sown to the ground that is crying and speaking for her. Hallelujah! Amen. Glory to Jesus. Even in this, now that is outside there. Imagine in this house where the blood of Jesus is speaking. Yes. Where the spirit of Jesus is calling. Amen. Where the spirit of Jesus is calling on us. Amen. Sometimes I read the Bible and I'm like, is, do, do, do you really have to beg us? And because sometimes with the way the Bible says, I read Isaiah, was it Isaiah 41? Where God is saying, I am God. Where I am the only God. No one is beside me. Do go, bring your case before me. Excuse me, almighty God. Who am I to bring my case before you? Who am I? Who are we? He said it and it's final. And it's not like he's a bad God. He's a good God. He's a great God. He's a God of love. Yes. God that wants the best for us. Yes. If that zeal can cry out for a lady like that, imagine what the spirit of Jesus will do in this house. Yes. Imagine what the spirit of God will do in this house. So she just came in, got her license, hiring people. I saw her the other day. Are you, do you have enough? You know, you need more people? No. She's full. And even the one that she's about to open, four clients are waiting. She's just about to close the house. The door has been opened. Amen. May God open our door of destiny for us. Amen. May God connect us to our helper of destiny. Amen. May God connect us to our helper of destiny. Amen. Treat people, you have no idea who your helper of destiny is. You have no idea who your helper of destiny is. It could be a blind man that you ignored somewhere. And a blind man has a sword in politics or in somewhere, somewhere that can call you and bless you. Yes. I have a bunch of stories like that. We went to clinical. The, the student that was with me was taking care of a client in that nursing home. The, the son was so impressed. I can't believe you can take care of my mother like that. They watched her the first day, I believe. It was the second day that she was telling me this. And she said, Ms. Victoria, am I allowed to get a job from the, here? I said, you cannot, according to the state regulation, you cannot get a job here. She said, no, 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 no. It is the client's son that saw the way she took care of her mother and said, you know what, I have a personal care home. Here's my phone number, call me. What we do speaks for us. Amen. It may not be in the open, but behind the scene, it's crying for us. Amen. Let's look at the, uh, uh, the next thing here. Zeal provokes the zeal of God. Your own zeal provokes the zeal of God to move on your behalf. Amen. Our zeal, the way we do things, the way we act, it doesn't mean that we don't make mistakes. But get off your mistake and move on. You know, get off your mistake and move on. Somebody said that, uh, uh, that uh, a successful man is not one that is beating down. A successful man is the one that is beating. Fall down, rise up, and keep moving. Yes. Fall down, rise up, and keep moving. Zeal provokes the house, the zeal of God. Zeal, your own zeal, the way you apply it will make God speak and move on your behalf. Amen. Something I read about Laban and then uh, um, Jacob. You know, this is where touched up my anointing and do my prophet no harm came in. When, when Laban was doing all he was doing, he didn't know that God was watching. And jo, jo, uh, Jacob, you know, he treated Jacob and gave him, uh, he gave him Leah. And then later on, after seven years again, which is 14 years, he gave him now Rachel. Made him work for him for 14 years. Because of love, the man stayed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The man stayed. 
But at some point, this man now is ready to move on. He gathered all his families, let's move. And this man, knowing and understanding that the presence of, ja of Jacob in his house was the result of his blessing. Yes. That's, what we, that's, that's the way we think, the same thing with us. Where we walk, our company, people that are around us, blessings of God is contagious. Yes. The blessings of God is contagious because of your presence in a place, other people can be blessed. Because of um, Paul and the sheep, the many lives that were inside that sheep was spared. Because of our presence, because of our, and this is all zeal. You can zeal, like I said before, it's not a joke, it's not a play. You can't be zealous today and tomorrow you back out and come back again and back out and come back again. It's not a joke. It's not, it's not a joke. We can't do it that way. So God met Laban, on the, Laban you know, gathered up and pursued. He can't leave. He can't leave. He cannot leave because he, he, he still wants that blessing to continue. But you didn't treat him right. And God met him on the road. Don't say anything good or bad to him. He doesn't, I don't even want you to bless him. He's mine. Don't bless him. My blessing is good enough for him. Don't curse him either because your curse will not rest on him. Don't do anything with him. Touch not my anointed. And do my prophet no harm. May God be hard, Jesus. Car I was shaking in the boss. My recessing can never hand the boss in our behalf. May God rise and act on our behalf in the name of Jesus. May God arise on our behalf in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my father and my God. Hallelujah to your holy name. That was in uh, uh, uh. anyway. Let me not go there. I'm running out of time. Now, another thing is zeal is contagious. Zeal is contagious. What do I mean by that? When people see you, the way you love God, the way you act, the way you do things, the way you're always here. Some people have always asked, which church do you go to? The zeal in your heart is contagious. People see how you're zealous for the things of God and they want to join that thing. It, it kind of encourages others. If this person can do this, I can do it also. If this person is doing this, what prevents me from doing the same? Zeal is contagious and it encourages others. It makes others want to do the same thing you're doing. So if you give up, you have no idea how many people you have discouraged. You have no idea, people, that God wants to pull. As many of us as are here, there are people that are watching us. You don't have to be up here. You don't have to be there. You know, many people are, people are watching us. People are watching us, even those of us that are sitting down there, people are watching. Yeah. There are people that are looking at us and saying, you know what, I want to do the same. I want to do this. Oh, she did that. I want to, you know, it encourages other people to do the same. So the zeal for the house of God is contagious. The zeal for God is, you do it and do it right. It produces fruit. It produces results. Other people see it and they want to do the same. And the, what it does is what? It pulls them closer to God. Your zeal will draw people closer to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. It's a driving force. Your zeal drives you. I believe that zeal, any man that has a strong zeal in him is backed up by the spirit of God. It's the spirit that drives you. It's the spirit of God that puts that desire in there. And, and it drives you. Sometimes you don't even want to do it, but before you know it, strength comes up and you rise and you do it again. Even though today I'm so tired, tomorrow I don't think I will do this. Before you know when that time comes, that driving force will come up again and you are there. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Zeal also will drive, drive us to a place of worship. you forgive me. I'm leaving a couple of uh, um, scriptures because of time. Zeal will drive us to a place of worship. Zeal will drive us to a place of worship. You have no idea what the presence of God does as we gather all here together. You have no idea the things that are dropping off of you. In the realm of the spirit, it drives you to a place of worship where you now begin to seek God in spirit and in truth. He said this, that worship me, worship, must worship me in spirit and in truth. It is zeal for God, for the things of God that will lead you to that position where you begin to worship God in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now let me go to the next thing. Zeal promotes boldness. This one I have to read. First Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel 17. Let's look at the account of David. First Samuel 17 verse 26. First 
Samuel 17, 26. And David spoke to the man that stood by him, saying, This is between David and Goliath. Imagine little David and big Goliath. What shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He could care less how big and tall that, little, that, that, that big giant is. And he now forgot how little he is. The only thing that he can see is the spirit and the big, bold spirit of God within him. That's the only He forgot that he was a young 17-year-old. He forgot all of that. Now, what is moving him now is the spirit of God that is driving him, the spirit of boldness. The zeal that he has for God now built his boldness and made him speak the way he spoke. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Now he's bringing it back to God. You're not defiling men. You're speaking of my God like that. Let them bring him here and I will kill him. Is boldness a 17 year old? How many 17 year old today can speak like that? Praise the name of the Lord. So, both zeal kind of promotes your boldness, it builds your boldness. Now, look at the next thing it also builds our faith. Your zeal enhances your faith, it solidifies your faith, it strengthens your faith. Because the more you do these, these things for God, you know, God will not forget your works, He will not forget your labor. Move on down the same 17, I, uh, 1 Samuel 17, verse 33. You forget your weakness. The zeal for the house of God will make you forget your weakness. And he said, and Saul so said to David, thou art not able to go against this, Phil this Philistine to fight with him because they are looking at the physical. They are not, look not looking at what God deposited inside. They are not looking at the training that God already did behind the scene. Many of us here, God has done so many training on us behind the scene that will show up someday in Jesus' name. Amen. For thou art a young but a young, and he a man of war from his youth, an experienced warrior. And a 17 year old is talking to him like that. Next verse. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the stock of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him. He's just narrating how God, you know, uh, how God built him up. Move on to the next thing. Next verse. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of those lions and the bears. Move on to the next thing. That is just a, 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 a build up of faith in him. His faith is being solidified. He doesn't see his weakness anymore. He doesn't see his, phys his physical strength. And he forgot how old he was. And what zeal will do for us, the more you come into the presence of God, saturate yourself in the presence of God, your weakness drops. What you now see is the spirit of God within you. Every discouragement is destroyed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every discouragement is gone. Hallelujah Amen. to Jesus. Thank you, my Father. You. Blessed be your holy name. And one thing I also want to say is zeal is rewarding. Zeal is rewarding. Zeal has reward. Zeal has reward. One of the rewards I would say is it draws you closer to God. It, it makes us come closer to this, you know, being that we call God. You begin to fellowship with him. You begin to have revelation of him. You begin to have understanding of him. Healings and every finances, everything is being met because of the reward that comes out of zeal. Even man will bless him. I've seen so many people that say, ah, this brother, he's so zealous. I will meet his need. I will meet his need. I will do this for him. Even when God is not even involved. If man is like that, how much more God? Yes. So zeal is very, very re re rewarding. It connects us back to God. But main thing I want to say here is any zeal that is not driven by the Holy Spirit will produce uh, 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 is a zeal without knowledge. Any zeal that is not driven by the Holy Spirit, every zeal that connects you to Jesus is driven by the Holy Spirit. And we have to make sure that we have that connection and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The last uh, book I want to look at here, or second to the last, is Hebrews chapter 12. So whatever we are going through, whatever we are going through, whatever is around us, let's look unto God. It's the Holy Spirit that will enable us to get through things. Hebrews chapter 12.
verse 1 to 2. Our zeal is propelled by the Spirit of Jesus. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. With so great a cloud of witnesses. And I believe Jesus is part of that witnesses truth because he went through the same. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience. He said run, he didn't say walk. They will put you to a place where you begin to run with perseverance. You begin to, even when it's punished, even when you don't like it, even when it's painful, you begin to run for God. He didn't say walk, he said run. He said run. And let us run with what? Patience. Zeal is backed up with patience. You have to be patient with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Then uh, run with patience the race that is set before us. Every one of us has a race that is set before us. Yes. And zeal for the house of God will take us there. Amen. We will help us join that race peacefully Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now verse 2 said, looking unto Jesus. I love this verse. Looking unto Jesus. When you look up, who do you see? Jesus. Jesus. In your weakness, who do you see? Jesus. Jesus. When pain is around, who do you see? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is the one that God has given to us to look unto. In everything where there, where there is pain, in no matter what it is, without Jesus, we cannot make it. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Amen. Looking unto Jesus, the author. Some translations said the pioneer. The pioneer of our faith. The pioneer and what? The perfecter. This one said finisher. I'd like to use that word to pray for myself. If the Bible said that you are the author, which means you wrote it, you started it. Mm -hmm. And you will bring it to perfection, which means you will take it to maturity. Amen. So you give me faith. And now you will take that faith to maturity. You will mature that faith to the point where I will be able to get what God has put in my life. Amen. You know, God do perfect your faith. Jesus, unless you look unto Jesus, that faith will not be there. Yeah. You have to look up. You look left, you look back, you look, you will, you will, you will miss it. So look up, look unto Jesus, the pioneer, the author, the maturer, the one that will bring put your faith and bring it to maturity of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him and toward the cross. No matter what pain we're going through, no matter what affliction, no matter what pain, no matter what sorrow, no matter what problem. I look at myself. There was a time I was going to pray and the devil said, what are you going to preach? I said, I have more to preach. It's not my word, it's the word of my Lord. It's the word of my Savior. It's not by mind, it's not by power. And he sat down. I 
after despising the shame, unless you despise that shame, you have to scorn it. You have to push it away. You have to fight it through. You have to walk it through because you are not there alone. You walk through that fire. Jesus is there with you. You know, sometimes when you are going, you have to go through some things and God will see, oh, you're still there. You have to go through something. Every one of us have different things set before us to go through. And after that, this is the end. After that, he said, oh, after he has endured all of that, he has despised all of that, now he sat down. He obtained that thing he's looking for. Now he obtained it. He despised it. He despised it. He despised it. He endured it. And those, you know, sometimes you have obstacles that are set before you. Jesus said, let us cross over to the other side. And in between that side is a sea, a river. God tell them, move on to the land filled with what? Milk and honey. And in between that milk and honey is what? The Red Sea. Oh, Shaka, they both stand up. But you know what gives me joy? Inside that Red Sea, Jehovah Shammah is right there. Amen. When I read that thing, you know what? What made me laugh? Inside the Red Sea. When, the, when, the, uh, when, when Pharaoh's group, Egyptians, got there, uh-huh. the Bible recorded that when they got to the Red Sea, God touched their wheels. And the wheels of their chariot became apart and they could not cross over. In the name of Jesus, may those who pursue you, may the Lord 